Hey, I'm Max Fly Tires. Welcome back to another Tying Tuesday. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're going to tie a Sprott Midge. It's a great little dry emerger crossover fly. Works really well where there's a hefty midge population. So I have my hook in the vise there. It's the U201. It's a nice curved shank hook with a straight eye on it, which will lend itself nicely when we go to tie in this parachute post. We'll go ahead and start our thread on our hook. This is a 16 aught Vivis black thread. I'm sure you've seen me use it before. Great small diameter thread, really strong. I enjoy using it on small flies just because it allows for a lot of wiggle room in regards to your thread wraps. So once we have that set, we're gonna grab a little bit of Antron. And this is gonna be our trailing shuck here. So I pull just a little bit off of the spool there. This is the UTC Black Antron and I'm going to split it at least in half and probably thin it down a little bit further than that even for this size 18 that I'm tying today. It's going to be our trailing chuck so we don't need a whole lot of material. Just something that's going to grab a little bit of water and create some bubbles on the back end for the shuck coming off of that emerging insect. I'm going to go ahead and measure and we'll do right about the length of the body and tie that in towards the back here. Keeping it on top, and then we'll walk on down. I like to tie it in a fair ways down because it'll help keep that shuck sort of pointing downward. I'm gonna have kind of a parachute hackle on this fly, and so that'll keep the front end of the fly upward, and then this trailing shuck will go down into the water nicely, giving the illusion that this bug might be trapped in that surface film and a nice easy meal for the hungry trout looking up at it. It's always a good opportunity area for them. So now that we have that tied in place, I went ahead and used the material to help build my taper. Clip that out and we'll work on that just a little bit further. Make sure that our taper is what we want. Pretty thin profiled bug, but still needs its bugginess. So we'll walk on up from there and then we're gonna tie in our post. So our post is a little bit of this Wapsi para post in white. And I have the small size here, you can see the diameter there. I find sometimes on these smaller bugs, I like to take them and kind of stretch them out a bit. And that'll just thin it down the diameter slightly and make it a little bit more appropriate to the size of this fly. So you can use the small on down. This is a size 18, get away with it down to a 22 or so. And it really helps to just kind of taper it a little bit. So once we have that, we'll go ahead and kind of measure in place. And I'm going to go back to the bend on this. And that'll be how far our post is going to stick up and off of this fly. And then I can keep that in place and go ahead and capture it with my thread. Be aware if you do use this Vivas 16 knot for this pattern, that it can be kind of sharp. So these first few wraps that I'm laying down, I'm not putting too much tension on until I kind of sneak behind it and then really snug it into place. If you use like a UTC 70 denier or something that'll lay a little bit more flat, this issue won't exist as much. From there, I'm gonna cover it up a little ways towards the front and then we're gonna trim that out as close as we can. And I'll stretch it a little bit so it bounces back in there. And trim it down even further. I have my nice, super fine arrow point scissors. These are the razor arrow point scissors from Dr. Slick. Really make this fine work nice and easy. Clear out some space so that we don't build up too much bulk. But then when we're ready, we can go ahead and cover that all up with our black thread here. Don't have to worry too much about your eye. Obviously you don't want to crowd it at this point, but we're going to whip finish around the post so we don't have to worry about leaving room for that point. 
So I'll also sneak right back behind here and build just a little bit of a thread dam behind it, helping to get that post to stand up a little bit more straight before I sneak down and around it. And same thing with this Vivas, not too much tension on it. You don't want to cut it off at this point, but we do want to build up a little bit of a thread base around this post to wrap our hackle around. So making sure that I got everything covered up nicely there and we have our post in place and then we can bring our hackle on down. So I have measured my hackle can utilize that hook point there to find the right gauge. Use a hook hackle gauge as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it and we'll strip this down, all those fluffy fibers so that we got a nice clean tie-in point here. Just like so. And then instead of going vertically with this hackle, I'm gonna tie it in horizontal so that we wrap it around the post. And on this one, I don't always do this, but on this one, I'll tie it with the shiny side down just to add a little aspect to how the fish are gonna view this fly from below. So we'll tie that in right on the side there, sneak our thread around, make sure it's nice and secure, and then land our thread directly in front of that parachute post. From there, I'm gonna take my hackle And we're gonna go around, try not to turn it as we go. It's fighting me a little bit. Didn't trim off quite enough barbels, so I'm gonna sneak back in and get those out of the way because they're not helping me wrap. There we go. So we'll sneak around it right on those thread wraps that we created, keeping some nice tension on it as we go. And we'll go around three or four times here, making sure we're snugged up against that post. And then trying to keep a nice flat plane with that hackle. So it doesn't roll around on me. Once you're happy with how much hackle you have, you can take your thread and we're gonna go up and under. And then we'll sneak underneath that stem hackle so that we have it nice and secured there. And then we can trim out that excess. Without trimming out our barbels, the ones we wanna keep there. And then whip finish. And this can be a pretty tricky part of this fly. I'm gonna turn it horizontally. And then we'll go ahead and whip finish. So I'm gonna come around. Line it up against the post and not against the hook. And just try and make sure that we're staying underneath everything with a few turns there. And securing it all down. And pull straight down against that one. Then we can trim out our thread. sure everything's where we want it there. And then I'm gonna just thin out my shuck a little bit. This one's pretty good, but maybe taper it. Just to give it more of a natural look. I don't want it to be just a straight 90 degree cut there. But there is a sprout midge. Great little wintertime dry fly. Fish it throughout the year. It's great in a tandem dry rig. You can fish it behind an indicator. A lot of different situations that this file put fish in the net for you.